Hello, my name is Diana Anderson Brush. I'm the Associate Director for the Center for Career and Professional Development. I've been employed at Clarion University for over 30 years, and I'm pleased to welcome you to session two, strategies and resources for your job search. The second in a series of three presentations for the alumni professional development series. This will be a high level overview and we will move through the slides at warp speed so that we have time for question and answer at the end of the presentation. During the session, we will cover how job search skill development along with the personal commitment of time and effort can lead to positive results. By the end of the session, it's our goal that you will acquire some skills in the mindset essential for adopting proactive job search strategies. Be able to locate keywords, job titles, and industries to expand the search results. Become familiar with a variety of job search resources. Learn why it is important to customize your application materials. And lastly, how to become familiar with strategies to expand your job search approach beyond traditional methods. An effective job search begins with a game plan. The difference between a job seeker who has success in the job market and one who has difficulty is often due to the amount of preparation and planning which is dedicated to the process. On average, an entry-level job search can range from three to six months. When to apply? That depends on your field of study, desired occupation, and targeted industry. So what steps do you take to start? Number one, develop a timeline for your search. Step two, make a list of job search tasks that you need to accomplish. Three, Develop a time, a deadline, a timeline for each task. And finally, contact someone who will hold you accountable, who will check in with you on a designated time and date to make sure you stay on track. So what's all this talk about keywords? Why is it important to know keywords related to the job search process? Identify job titles, occupations, industries, and keywords so that you can successfully navigate online job boards so that you can take advantage to the fullest, the job board. Two of my absolute favorites, will be covered here, ONET Online and the Bureau of Labor Statistics. They are both reputable sites which provide detailed description of employment for use by both job seekers and HR professionals. You can locate an occupation using a keyword, search for occupations by knowledge, skills, and abilities, or browse a list of occupations in your desired field of work. By identifying these key words, your job posting results can be increased greatly. So let's take a look at my favorite, ONET Online. And you can enter the occupation or keyword in either of these search boxes. And because tonight we had a lot of communication and marketing alumni registered for this event, I chose the keyword communication to enter in ONET. So our quick search yielded 20 of the closest matches, which are shown here first. You will see that there are actually 437 matches shown, so you would expand this to see all of those results. But just for demonstration purposes tonight, I will select public relations manager, and let's explore that further. So we open the public relations manager. We're going to get a brief description of what someone would do on that job and the sample of job titles that have been reported for this. In this case, it's pretty consistent that um, public relations 
appears in most of the titles, but you'll see some of them are community relations director, communications manager, development director. So if you were to only enter public relations manager or PR manager, you might be missing out on opportunities for these other job postings. So definitely take you know, in mind that various job titles, to make a list of those and use those as you explore the different job boards. The other thing that you can find um, that could be helpful in your job search when you explore these job boards is entering tasks that are related to the profession. These will also be referenced when we talk about resume development and technology. Notice that ONET Online lists the five of X number of tasks that are affiliated with this occupation. So you would need to expand this to see all 20. And the same with technology. I refer to these as the three T's for keyword searches in job boards, titles, tasks, technology. What other resources are available to you? On the Clarion University website, forward slash job search, you will find this checklist that can walk you through various strategies covered in tonight's session. There's no specific job search strategy that will work for every job seeker. So therefore, it's important to use a variety of approaches. Another strategy or resource to you is Clarion University's Career Management System. Yes, you have your own career management network. It's called Handshake. On Handshake, you can access a calendar of career events, search a data, database full of internships, part-time employment, full-time, seasonal jobs, participate in virtual and campus recruiting events, research employers, make your resume available to employers, or schedule an appointment with a professional career coach from Clarion University's Career Center. One of the most commonly used resources are job boards, and there's a variety out there. So we also have a link at clarion.edu forward slash job search with some many useful sites by, um, based on various categories. Now, every state has an employment office or an employment office, um, which can be found through this Department of Labor website. In Pennsylvania, I clicked on PA, I would see a variety of services and resources. The most frequently used for Pennsylvania for um, employment is Career, Rent, Career Link. Another resource for you is federal, state, and county websites. So if you're looking for to be an employee of the state of Pennsylvania. It would not be CareerLink. CareerLink lists jobs. It's a job board for Pennsylvania job seekers. But you want to be employed by the federal government or the state of Pennsylvania or local counties, then search those resources. USAjobs.gov is post most of the federal jobs um, for the United States. And you know, only 20% of federal jobs are in DC. So there's federal jobs all over the United States and all over the world. Um, and I also have listed here for you a link to the State Civil Service Commission and state jobs within Pennsylvania. But again, every state has a similar page for their state employment. So don't forget to research those sites as well and municipal obviously for local jobs. So let's circle back now, talk about keywords and look at ONET. We talked about titles, tasks, and technology. What would that look like if I used one of the previously mentioned job boards? Using Career Link, the Pennsylvania Employment Office, I, 
used our initial keyword of communications. And from that, matched with 60,000 job postings this week. That's a bit large. <laughs> I don't have time to go through 60,000 job search. So next I thought, well, let me narrow it down. Let me just use one of these titles. I use public relations manager. Now, public relations manager yielded 20, 427 matches. Then I tried PR manager. Notice it yielded 197. Of course, any word you use in your keyword search, as long as that shows up in the title or job description, it's going to generate or yield those matches, those various job postings that are available because of that keyword search. Now, don't forget that you can enter tasks. So not necessarily titles. You enjoy designing and editing promotional publications. So I enjoy designing and editing promotional publications. I entered the keyword edit promotional publications or edit publications and matched with 59 jobs on CareerLink. And lastly, if there's a particular technology you enjoy using that's kind of specialized in your field, that is another way that you can possibly yield some different jobs posting results. In this case, I entered the razor's edge and found eight positions that specifically listed razor's edge. And lastly, we don't want to overlook other opportunities to leverage your personal and professional relationship. Um, they will increase opportunities. So tap that hidden job market and make connections through events and social networking. It has been reported that 80% of jobs are never advertised. So your challenge is to find out where those jobs exist and networking is one of the best ways to find employment. Employers are eager to meet you. They are at job fairs, informational sessions, virtual recruitment interviews, site visits and networking events. So many events offer op options as well. You know, you say, well, Clarion University is sponsoring this on-campus career fair. You know, we offer an opportunity for you to meet with all of those employers virtually. And we will have a laptop available at that event and you can come join us if, when, if and when we have in-person events again. But many events that are in-person definitely have opportunities to participate, participate virtually, or if it's a virtual event and there, you have a conflict, they also provide online directories and resources so that you can still register and connect with the employers who are, are seeking candidates for their positions, even though you can't participate in person. And build your network. Talk to family members, friends, neighbors, coworkers, and alumni to inquire about opportunities and get some leads. Join and attend professional organizational meetings, conferences, seminars in your field. When you make a new contact, ask that contact, can you provide me with the name of one or two individuals you know who would know about finding a job in this profession? Build that network. Keep track of these individuals, get their contact information, business cards, um, and also don't forget to explore your social media resources LinkedIn is the fastest growing way to network with employers and colleges in the field, research and follow various companies and to find job opportunities. It's also a great way for you to learn about alumni who are at Clarion University, where they employed, what they majored in, what they're doing now, making those connections and mentoring with the alumni through LinkedIn. But also I should have added on this slide, Graduate, which is our alumni engagements networking um, platform, Graduate. So the top three social media platforms used by employers in terms of effectiveness as reported by the National Association of Colleges and Employers has, was LinkedIn was ranked at 91%, Facebook at 73%, and Twitter at 67%. Eventually, one of these contexts will lead to another and another and so on until you get a referral that is successful. 
you never know from where your next job will come. Another tip and strategy for the job search. Okay, we showed you a lot of sites, network, job boards, various um, checklists and, and platforms that will help you find the job. But it's also important then to get your foot in the door. You don't want to get noticed for the wrong reasons. You want to get noticed for the right reasons and get your foot in that applicant pool so that you can present your credentials in person. So your resume is that marketing tool that's going to provide that summary of your knowledge, your achievements, your skills, and your experiences, any relevant internships, co-ops, externships, volunteerism, clinicals, fellowships, and work experience are all valued by employers. If you see it on the job posting, it's valued, it should be on your resume. Phase one, and I'll fly through this quickly because resume development is a, another workshop in itself, but phase one, please make sure that you are not using a resume that is a format that's 15, 20 years old. Resume styles now have to be adapted to applicant tracking systems, this online screening processes. So you want to avoid templates, make sure you're creating your um, resume or curriculum vita on a Word or a Google Doc, that you're using the proper tense, past and present, where it's appropriate for the verbs. Um, that it is uniform, consistent, error-free, grammatically correct, and has a proper layout with uniform margins and a, a one font throughout with proper spacing and bolding and underlining. And phase two, that we, when we look for re at resumes and helping someone with their job search is helping us again circle back to own it. You want to paint a picture of your knowledge and skills and experiences by using strong, specific action-oriented words and concise bulleted phrases. ONET and a job posting. Those are my top two recommendations for customizing your resume with good, strong, descriptive content. And the third phase of resume development in this market for today is tailoring your resume to the position you're seeking, whether it's a fellowship, internship, or job posting. Yes, it's a lot of work. It's a job to get a job, but review that um, resume, pull up the, your job posting, and highlight, compare the two. Compare your resume with the job posting. Highlight the content that relates to the competencies you have on your, your resume, and your goal is to demonstrate that you have the knowledge, skills, and experience to get your foot in the door for the interview. If your resume is heavily highlighted, good, you're on the right track. But if you've got these gaps, then there are other ways we can customize and build your resume to show, you know, to fill in those gaps for employment. My last tip is a little bonus tip that wasn't on my learning goals for tonight, but please show that you're a professional and follow up after um, the job fair or interview, you know, it's as equally important as the preparation and interactions that you have in the job search process. So send anyone and everyone who's helped you along your journey to securing employment, a thank you note, a letter or an email in any form, they're appreciated and they'll take note and make note of your professionalism. So that concludes tonight's presentation, our next session is making the connection, creating a meaningful professional network in the digital age on March 16th. You can register on the alumni engagement website, the same way you registered for tonight's workshop. And if you'd like to further develop your skills, you can meet with a career professional um, and the Center for Career and Professional Development through Handshake. Schedule, not necessarily with the major, what major you were in in college. If your major is one thing, but your occupation is in a different academic discipline, your, your career goal, then you can schedule with an individual who now works with the major that, that relates to that occupation. I hope that makes sense. There's no limit as to how many times you can meet with a career professional. It's still free to alumni of Clarion University. Lastly, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. I look forward you know, to meeting with you and 
I love using LinkedIn to help make connections with alumni and I'm exploring graduate as well so that I can become more skilled in using that as a resource. Thank you for joining us tonight. Definitely follow up with us by email, um, telephone, or through an appointment on Handshake. Have a good evening, everyone.